Hi there, and let's get to it. In the previous video, we looked at how we can use the pointers and adjustments on the color wheels to affect the hue and luminance of the image. We were mostly working out of the primary wheels, but I can demonstrate that I can do something similar from the log too. I'm going to click on the reset all button in the top right corner to get the original flat image back. I can now switch over to the logarithmic wheels and try making similar changes. Once again, I can pull in a little purple to neutralize the green image and go after the highlights to introduce some new colors. And you might be asking yourself, so what's the difference between these two sets of wheels? They seem to be identical. The way the wheels are used is very similar, but the way that they target the luminance ranges of the image is really very different. So let's take a look. With primary controls using lift, gamma, and gain, what is implied by those terms is that the gamma controls the overwhelming majority of the luminance ranges of the image, tapering off at the darkest and lightest points. With lift, you start at the shadows and then in a linear fashion you taper off towards the brightest portion of the image. The gain does exactly the same thing but on the opposite side, so it starts off with the brightest parts and tapers off. If we look at the way that shadows, midtones, and highlights are targeted in a logarithmic mode of operation, the shadows, highlights, and midtones are much more specific to their luminance range. So there is a bit of crisscross between the shadows and midtones and the midtones and the highlights, but it's not very significant. What this results in is a different way of impacting your image. If I wanted to introduce a bit of warmth into the shadows using my primaries, I'm going to end up with something that looks quite natural and ends up affecting almost the entire image, just the shadows a lot more than the midtones and highlights. Let me reset this and go into log mode. If I try to do the same thing, what's happening is a lot more restrictive. My midtones and especially my highlights are not being affected anywhere near as much. My sky has remained completely blue, the clouds are untouched. The green areas in the back are not being manipulated. It's only the darkest parts of the image, or what appear to us as black, that has gone bright red. So I can grab a still of this, reset, and show you a comparison of what the two look like. So here you go. On the left side, we have the effect of the primaries, and on the right, the log. There's ups and downs for using either one. With primaries, I find that you overall get a much more natural grade because the way that the colors mix tends to be more organic. Whereas with log, you tend to get these really harsh separations between color. And if you have a gradient, you might find that halfway through the color drastically cuts off. So I tend to start off with primary grading, and then if I need to be really exact about my colors, then I will switch over to the log and I'll start making some changes there. One last thing to mention is that log mode is designed to work with log C footage. And the recommended workflow for these wheels is thus. You begin by establishing how dark you want the darkest part of your image to be using the master wheel beneath the offset. So I'll keep an eye on people's clothes and take it down as dark as I want it. After that, you use your contrast and pivot controls to indicate how you want the relationship between the darkest and lightest parts of the image to appear. After the luminance has been established, you can use the offset wheel to indicate the overall color scheme that you want to go for. So again, I'm going to neutralize this using the magenta portion of the color wheel. And the last step is to use the remaining three wheels to introduce the creative color grade. So this is where you can go really crazy with the colors and do something interesting. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.